Hi, welcome to Unique Mender's online classroom. Today we will have a section on the hematology questions. As you know that laboratory science, both for the laboratory technician and the technologist category, they will be asked on hematology questions from all the topics like uh, even if they are writing DHA exam or the DOH exam or for the Oman or the Qatar or Saudi Prometric exam, hematology is one of the very important topic that you are not supposed to miss. And there will be many number of questions that will be asked on hematology questions. Okay. Basically, you can say like there are three different types of questions that can be asked. One can be the image based questions like an image will be shown and then you may have to identify the cell or you may have to say uh, what is the disease condition associated with it. That is one pattern of question. Second is will be very direct questions like they will be asked on which is the diagnostic test that has to be performed or they will be given a hematological profile and you may have to identify the disease. Okay, and in some questions, it will be the case study questions like a patient history along with the laboratory values will be given to you and you may have to identify the disease associated or the genetic markers identification. Likewise, there may have some of the questions will be having sub questions also. So these are the roughly patterns that have been observed in all the exams that have been conducted as the Prometric and the Pearson view exams. Okay. So let's move on to certain questions for your reference, like how it will be asked, okay? We'll move to the first question. There is an image shown on the screen. The question is, I'll read out, the presence of an increased number of hypersegmented neutrophils in the peripheral blood as shown in the image is an indication of which of the following condition? What is hypersegmented neutrophils? That is a clue, okay? Hypersegmented neutrophils means the neutrophils usually have three to four lobes that you know. So hypersegmented means when the number of lobes are more, like more than five or six lobes that are seen inside the neutrophil. So that is the indication. And from the picture, you can see that it is a larger cell. It is not in the size of a neutrophil. Okay. Now we'll move to the options. Now the options given are, it is a pre-leukemic condition or the second option is it is a megaloblastic anemia. The third option is a plastic anemia. And the fourth option is myeloproliferative disorder. Now, among which of these conditions you can see the hypersegmented neutrophils? Okay. Now, for this, if you are no, if you are not very sure on the answers, you have to have a technique in ruling out the choices. Okay, the ruling out of choices means whether it is pre-leukemia. Pre-leukemia means these are conditions which is not exactly a leukemic condition, but we are just before the leukemic conditions, there are certain clinical uh, conditions that are associated that can be categorized as pre-leukemia. For example, uh, polycythemia is a pre-leukemic phase, okay? Or the MDS, the myelodysplastic syndrome, that is a pre-leukemic phase. So whether the hypersegmented neutrophils are being seen in these conditions, okay? Now, hypersegmentation of neutrophils or the neutrophil lobes or the nucleus is having some misarrangement okay that is the reason why it is hypersegmented now coming to the second option that is megaloblastic anemia now you know that megaloblastic anemia is actually due to the vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency so when vitamin b12 and folic acid is deficient that will actually cause a decreased synthesis of thymidine nucleotide that will eventually causes a disrupted nuclear division now you have the clue, right? So the answer will be the megaloblastic anemia. So that is how you can actually come to the right conclusions on the questions. We'll move on to the second question. I'll read out the question for you. A 10 year old male is brought in with a joint swelling and prolonged bleeding after a minor injury. The family history reveals similar complaints in the maternal uncles. Lab results have been shown. They have a normal platelet count prolonged APTT result, there is a normal PT and a low factor of factor 8. Okay, factor 8 levels are being low. So, what are the clues that you can get from these questions? The one thing is that it was a male candidate and there is a second is there is a prolonged bleeding after an injury and the third is there is a family history associated, especially with the maternal uncles. So, it should be an inherited disorder and there is some 
uh, bleeding disorder. This is a bleeding disorder. So some factor may be deficient. Okay. Now, when you see that there is a prolonged APTT test and a normal PT, what does that indicate? That indicates that the factors that are there in the intrinsic pathway is being deficient and the extrinsic pathway is normal and there is nothing to do with the common factors. Okay, So exclusive factors that are there on the intrinsic pathway. So which are the factors that is there on the intrinsic pathway? And obviously it is given very straight away it is given that there is a factor 8 deficiency. So factor 8 is an exclusive factor in the intrinsic pathway and that is deficient. Now you just have to name the disorder. So what are the options given? The options is the first option is hemophilia B, the second option is hemophilia A, the third option is von Willebrand disease and the fourth option is DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. It's a very straightaway question because factor 8 deficiency is being reported so definitely it will go for hemophilia A. Okay, the other choice if it should have been hemophilia B, the factor 9 should be deficient. And in case of von Willebrand factor, it is a von Willebrand factor that is disease in the von Willebrand disease. So this is a kind of straightaway question that you have the options and it is very clearly indicated that there is a factor 8 deficient. So this type of questions can also be expected. Let's move on to another part of the second question. What is the mode of inheritance of this condition? Or it can be a new question framed also. They can ask you uh, the mode of inheritance of hemophilia A. That is also one of the uh, way in which this particular question can be asked. Okay. Now the choices can be autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked recessive and X-linked dominant. Now basically whenever you learn on inheritance of disorders, it can be either an autosomal inheritance or an X-linked inheritance. Now autosomal inheritance, the one thing you have to remember is these autosomal disorders can happen to both males and females. Whereas the X-linked disorders mostly will be expressed in the males, whereas it will be remaining as a carrier state in the females. Okay, So that is the first point. And what about uh, dominant disorders and recessive disorders? The meaning of dominant disorders is that when a gene is inherited to an offspring, one allele will be inherited from the maternal side and the other will be inherited from the paternal side. Okay, So when both these genes are being defective, certain disease will be expressed only when both these genes are defective. These are known as the recessive disorders. But when a, a, an offspring inherit and either one of the defective gene and then also if the disease is expressed, these kinds of disease is known as the dominant disorders. Okay, So dominant disorders definitely will have a normal gene inheritance along with a diseased gene inheritance. Okay, Because the dominant character it will dominate over the other allele so that is the word meaning so be clear on what is autosomal disorders what is dominant condition what is recessive condition and what is x-linked conditions okay so once again i'll let you know x-linked conditions are disorders that are usually been expressed in males and will be in the females they will act as carriers now in a hemophilia a in the previous question itself there was a clue that was given that the family history reveals that the maternal uncles are affected okay so there is a male gender association with this particular disorder now if the disease is expressed in the male genders what will be the answer Obviously, it should be an X-linked recessive disorder because only the uncles have been affected and the female genders are carriers and that's the reason why it is not a dominant condition, it is a recessive condition where the males will have only one X chromosome and the females will have two X chromosomes. Okay, So that is the um, the part B of the second question. Now, it, there can be another question related to the same question like what will be the treatment that can be given when it is identified of hemophilia A conditions or acute bleeding episode. Okay? Now, previously or about 20-25 years back, there have only been the fresh frozen plasma that can be given. But nowadays, newer drugs are there, like recombinant uh, factor concentrates are there. So, the options that are given here is the first one is platelet transfusion, second is desmopressin, 
third is the fresh frozen plasma and the fourth is a recombinant factor 8 concentrate. Now already I have explained to you why the recombinant factor 8 concentrate is used because it is a synthetically made concent factor concentrate. It does not have any of the other side effects and is very safe to use. So the first choice is definitely the recombinant factor 8 concentrate. But in some of the patients they may not afford for the rate or the expense of this. So the second choice can be the fresh frozen plasma and if a question has got another option like cryoprecipitate then before fresh frozen plasma you should uh, answer it as cryoprecipitate so let me say the order once again it can be the best option is recombinant factor 8 concentrate the second option will be of uh, cryoprecipitate the third will be the fresh frozen plasma and what is desmopressin desmopressin is a chemical medicine that can be given if the activity is slightly low it is not a complete deficiency of the factor but if the factor is there but the activity is reduced then that can be stimulated okay the factor production can be stimulated by desmopressin that is a drug but platelet transfusion that is of no use in case of hemophilia conditions because there is a normal platelet count will be there in the patient and it has nothing to do with the platelet transfusion okay so that is the second question we have right? the three sub questions are there for the second uh, question i hope it's clear to you coming to the third question now this is also a case-based question i'll read out for you a 60 year old male presents with fatigue easy bruising and recurrent infections the cbc report shows that he is anemic thrombocytopenia and the wbc count of 80000 per microliter with 65 percentage of the blast cells okay and the myeloperoxidase stain is also positive now in from this case study question the first question that is being asked is what is the likely diagnosis okay so what are things you can get it from here it is an old patient now bleeding tendencies are there then recurrent infection so there is immunodeficiency and the cbc report shows that there is anemia and thrombocytopenia with an increase in the wbc count okay now it is not just an increase in the wbc count the blast percentage is 65 percentage now what is the normal blast percentage will the blast cells be seen in the normal situation Blast cells will not be seen in the normal situations. It is usually seen increased in the leukemic conditions. Okay. Now, so this is a leukemic condition because in every leukemia, especially in the myeloid leukemias, you can see there is anemia and thrombocytopenia occurring. Okay. Along with an increased WBC count, the RBC count and the platelet count will be decreased. So that will indicate that it is a myelogenous leukemia. Okay. Now, among the myelogenous leukemia, there are two different types. One is known as the acute myelogenous leukemia and the other is a chronic myelogenous leukemia. How will you differentiate the acute and the chronic myelogenous leukemia? In the acute myelogenous leukemia, the blast cells or the immature cells will be more, more than 10 percentage. Okay? Whereas in the chronic myelogenous leukemia, the blast percentage will be less. Now coming back to the question, what is it given? 65 percentage of the blast. So you know that there is an increase in the blast percentage, right? So it should be an acute leukemia. Now, an acute myelogenous leukemia. Now there is another clue that is given, that is the myeloperoxidase stain is also positive. So myeloperoxidase is a histopathological stain that is used to identify the myelogenous blast cells or the myeloid cells okay because the myeloperoxidase activity is seen within the myeloid cell so it's a very clear option when you compare the options that are given chronic myeloid leukemia acute myeloid leukemia acute lymphoblastic leukemia and aplastic anemia aplastic anemia definitely you can rule out but it shows that anemia uh, because you know the WPC count is increased. A plastic anemia will have all the cell count dropped. Okay, here you know the WPC count is increased so that we can rule out a plastic anemia. Now, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, myeloperoxidase will not be positive for the lymphoblastic leukemia. So, here it is myeloperoxidase positive. So, we have confirmed that it can be either chronic myeloid leukemia or acute myeloid leukemia. How will you differentiate that? with the percentage of the blast cell. The percentage of the blast cells is 65 percentage. So it should be acute myeloid leukemia. Okay. If it was less than 10 percentage, you can go for the chronic myeloid leukemia. I hope the answer is clear to you. So the right answer will be choice B that is acute myeloid leukemia. 
Now again, there can be sub questions asked on that. What is the significance of a positive myeloperoxidase stain? Now the significance of myeloperoxidase stain is basically to differentiate between the myelogenous leukemia and the lymphocytic leukemia. Okay. Now, um, previously it was being used only the histopathological stains was there, but nowadays we have the seven part analysis and all the flow cytometric methods to actually identify what is the type of leukemia that is associated with the patient. Okay. Now here the question is, what is the significance of positive myeloperoxidase stain? The choices are, it is to confirm the myeloid origin. The second is, it suggests megakaryocytic lineage. Third is, it indicates a myeloid origin of the blast cells. And the fourth is, that indicate iron storage disorder. Now, clearly, the myeloperoxidase stain will indicate the myeloid origin of the blast cells. Okay, So, that is a stain that will differentiate between the myeloid leukemia and the lymphoid leukemia. Now, in most of these cases, there is a sub-question that is being added here that what is the chromosomal abnormality that is seen with the uh, AML M3, that is acute myelogenous leukemia M3, that is a subtype. Now, these cytogenetic markers are important because in most of the cases, it will be asked what is the specific marker that is identified. Okay, So, these are the cytogenetic markers which are considered to be very specific in certain uh, leukemic conditions. For example, you know a Philadelphia chromosome that will be positive in almost 90 percentage of individuals who have chronic myelogenous leukemia. But here the question is acute myelogenous leukemia with M3. Now acute myelogenous leukemia M3 according to the um, according to the pathology classification FAB classification the M3 is actually the acute promyelocytic leukemia APL okay. Now, that is characterized by the translocation, translocation of two chromosomes. I will read out the choice for you. All these are mentioned as translocation. The first translocation, the T, the small T stands for translocation. The T between chromosome number 9 and 22, then a translocation between chromosome number 15 and 17, then a translocation between chromosome number 12 and 21, and a translocation between 8 and 14. So, these are the options that are given. Okay. Now, among these 9 and 22 that I hope you all know, it is of the Philadelphia chromosome. Okay. Now, the other translocations might be confusing for you, for which I will give away the right answer, like AMLM3, it is a translocation between 15 and 17. Okay, these things you need to buy hard. There is no other um, method of, uh, you know, like um, coming to the conclusion. It is certain translocations or certain genetic markers that you may have to buy hard in certain disorders. Okay, especially I have seen uh, many times the questions has been repeated on the cytogenetic marker on uh, the chronic myelogenous leukemia that is a Philadelphia chromosome that is between translocation 9 and 22. And the translocation between 12 and 21, that is the most commonest genetic marker that is associated with acute lymphocytic leukemia that is usually happens during the childhood. Okay, And uh, translocation between 8 and 14, which is given as the other choice that is associated with the Burkitt's lymphoma. So, these translocations... Uh, has to be by hearted by you because uh, there will be questions asked. This is why I told you like it can be sometimes you may have to apply your knowledge by by hearting few things. Sometimes you have to know the physiology behind the questions, how it is functioning or what may be the um, laboratory investigation that will give you the right answer. So, these are a very few questions. We have just mentioned only the three questions and the sub questions on these to give you an idea like how the question will be framed and how you have to reach to the answers. I'll see you in the next set of questions very shortly. Thank you.